Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And today, we're going to talk about Golbez. Let's go ahead and dig in. Now, Golbez is a pretty beefy boy. Uh, he's basically like... I would classify him as a Dark Element Ibarra. Uh, comes in with Jet Black Mage, Green Mage, and Scholar as his jobs. He can equip armor, helm, and accessories. Really important on the armor part here in JP, he will use Rob's TMR uh, and kind of pop out some Keen Blade. So keep that in mind if you are a manual PvP player or you like to use kind of those Keen Blade strats. Uh, he's absolutely going to be viable for those. Uh, his TMR, HP 420, Defense Force, Spirit 12, Critical Evade 6. Not too excited for this myself. Decrease activation time 500 for four turns to self. Honestly, I feel like there's so many better TMRs out there. I think, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, 500 activation time decrease or decreasing activation time in general is usually not critical. Uh, it's usually for very specific strategies in very specific situations. Uh, his mastery ability, HP 10% for dark allies, uh, dark attack 15 for dark allies, match 15% for self, decreases skill activation by 300. Again, not the best, but not the worst. Uh, interestingly about him, he does get defense 12 through his kit. Uh, he does have agility 62, magic 538. He comes in with a little bit of weakness to uh, striking and 5% to pierce, 20 to striking. Uh, but overall, he's going to have 10% resistance to missile, 50% to magic, and 10% to slash. So he's got a reasonable kit here. Looking at his skills, this is where things get really interesting here. He has the Wisdom of the Moon people, which will be HP 12%, magic 24%. Uh, he has Gods and Demons from uh, Green Mage, which will give debuff resistance 12 for self, magic resistance 12 for self, uh, Black Demon Armor, Defense 30, Spirit 30 for 3 turns to self, Missile resistance 12% for self, Scholar's Knowledge, Defense 12 and Accuracy 20, then you have Emerald Echo, which will increase buff duration and debuff duration. And then, of course, preliminary chanting for decreases activation time. Now, you could, of course, get him most likely to, or you literally can, get him to 100% uh, activation time reduction. I don't think that's the way to go. But, you know, I think there's going to be people out there who kind of do go that route. In terms of counter abilities, he has uh, the Dark Moon counter, which is a 30% chance to proc and absorb 20% of the AP from the opponent. Uh, he has Dispel Counter, which dispels all buffs for target, and dispels Haste for a 20% chance. You're probably going to be setting Counter Logos. Uh, maybe you want the Absorb AP, depending on uh, how much AP he starts with, but I really think you're going to be going for the Counter Logos here. Uh, get that additional damage in. Maybe if you're trying to use him in like a solo PvE situation, you would want that Dark Moon set, but I don't see it being set all the time. And he's not a particularly AP-hungry individual either. Uh, in his primary kit, Black Fang is going to decrease Spirit 25 for 3 turns to target, primary attack. 121% uh, modifier, range height 1, 16 AP, looking pretty good here. Uh, Moon Eclipse increases magic attack 20 for 3 turns to self. Uh, this gets upgraded, it also de increases debuff resistance for all attack types by 100. Uh, so this gets buffed to increases magic attack 35 for 3 turns to self, and gives 100% debuff resistance to all elemental resistances and all attack types. So you're not going to be able to, you know, lower his slash resistance. You're not going to be able to lower his dark resistance. You're going to have to deal damage to him kind of on his terms. And that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, if you want to build for a slash resist and go against slash compositions, there's kind of nothing they're really going to be able to do against your Golbez. And it's a very unique kind of feature that he has. Uh, similarly, Dark Barrier, a very unique ability, uh, reduces the damage taken 30% for three turns for self and absorb 30% of the damage done for three turns to self. So not only is he going to be able to reduce the damage taken, he's also going to be able to heal himself. 
uh, Jet Black Fangs, which is, of course, a different version of Black Fangs, uh, <laughs> is a larger AoE version, which decreases Spirit 30 for three turns to target and 165% modifier attack. Uh, it has some really nice range here. Uh, you can see it has range height one, AoE height one. It has a large AoE, uh, gonna be nothing but good, and it does get upgraded uh, to have a 25% chance to inflict Immobilize. Not huge. You know, immobilized, not usually a big deal, uh, but depending on the circumstances, maybe maybe that's the direction you want to go. Uh, Abyssal Quasar, 220% uh, modifier attack. Uh, it is cross-shaped, range height 2, AoE height 1. Uh, you increase the modifier by 60%, so it becomes 280%. If the target has one of the following effects, so silence, poison, immobilize, uh, or spirit down. Uh, it also has a 25% chance to inflict silence for three turns to targets. So if you're going up against other mages, you know, he's going to have that opportunity. Uh, Meteor dispels auto revive on the target, increases spirit penetration 50 for one turn to self, and deals 220% modifier. Overall, you know, pretty great. Um, really awesome kit. The only thing that's really missing here is a 100% hit attack. And his dexterity is ranked 73rd uh, on the JP list in terms of comparison. And so there's going to be a couple things we're going to be looking for to kind of make him successful here. Uh, specifically, uh, we do have the Garvel VC coming out to complement him uh, in the near future. It's going to give uh, magic up, spirit up, decrease evasion. Uh, it's going to give good magic. It's going to give dexterity up 50, right? So he already has pretty low dexterity, but he's going to get dexterity 50, assuming you're putting the Garvel VC on him. Uh, it gives AOE resistance party-wide, magic attack, resi magic attack party-wide, sorry, and critical hit rate. So the question you need to ask yourself is, will Golbez be able to hit his opponents and that's kind of the big if right uh if golbez can his opponents he's probably pretty good he's tanky he's overall gonna be a good unit is he going to be a meta defining unit though and i think we're gonna have to wait and see because we do have a lot of things coming that both help him and hinder him right we have double vcs coming in the near future we have potentially uh, augmented TMR is coming. There's so many little details right now as to whether or not he's going to be successful without a 100% hit attack. Uh, we're gonna kind of have to wait and see. Specifically, what I would like to see uh, is some type of global exclusive buff on Garble's VC for him, which gives him accuracy uh, that would be a huge boon here for him he's already getting that dex 50 from that vc uh maybe if we could run you know a dex up vc to give him more accuracy he may be a little bit more successful in terms of his sub kits though and kind of what sub mage you're going to be running him uh you're probably going to be running him sub scholar i imagine and the one thing with sub scholar that's a little bit unfortunate here is he doesn't have the full kit and i love my scholars in this game uh and i love kind of their ability to deal striking damage and drain hp the problem is he doesn't get that ability pretty much he gets law of solidarity which gives defense up 15 for three turns defense debuff resistance uh he gets speed speed casting uh he gets dark collars which is good which gives the dark attack boost evocation boost and single target resistance so you're probably going to be running sub scholar potentially for that dark elemental boost, maybe for magic ball, uh, maybe for law of defeat for the attack down, but I don't see you running him, you know, kind of really crazy hard. Now I do see you using his limit break and his limit break is a very interesting ability because it, you basically want him to use his LB at all times. Uh, his LB is a very high range quad shaped attack, 63 AP, 200% modifier, increases magic 40%, increases defense 20%, or sorry, increases defense 20 for three turns, and uh, increases dark resistance 25% for three turns. So he's going to be like the way that I imagine Golbez. And this is kind of how I've been thinking about him as a unit. Depending on the map that you're on, whether it's for arena or whether it's for PvP, he's going to be really good on maps where you can engage with the opponent immediately, right? You can literally on first turn run across, pop his LB, 
and you're already engaged with the opponents. I think this is going to be the situation that we see Golvez utilized in the most. I don't think he's going to be a slow build, a slow roaming unit on the map. I think his goal is to get in there, get things done, and uh, kind of brawl with the opponent before they have time to put on AP buffs and put on other abilities. Now, you know, the question of whether or not should you pull is kind of going to be asked in another video. But I think overall, he has a solid kit. He's not going to be a terrible unit. PvE-wise, he's good. He has buffs for the party. He can give dark resistance up, right? Uh, he can be kind of a tank. He can have different resistances. Uh, he can counter drain AP in PvE. He can counter dispel. He has all of the things that are going to make him work in PvE. The question, though, is, you know, do we need another dark caster unit? Is there room for another dark caster unit? Are you gonna, you know, potentially replace him with maybe a dark slash unit one day? Uh, that's kind of all the things that I'm thinking about with him. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day and I will catch you guys next time.